Hi guys, Frankie V here with a quick show and tell. And today's project is to extract the uh, Mixmo uh, rig uh, character model and from uh, uh, Unreal 4, bringing that over into the Motion Builder, uh, re retarget uh, animation to it, and bring it back in. And uh, uh, that will allow us to do uh, some rather funky things as far as uh, animation goes in real time. So, um, try to move on and uh, keep this down to uh, a minimum as far as chit chat we'll, um, uh, we'll stick strictly with the, uh, uh, the bread and butter and meat and potatoes and being able to extract uh, the necessary data out of Unreal 4 via FBX now FBX is a native format which is native to motion builder so as part of the pipeline uh, it's a really good tool because it does oh, about let's say 50% of the work for you as far as uh, managing uh, uh, animation goes so uh, the start what we need of course is the skeletal information not necessarily the uh, actual character that is applied to because if we look over to the left hand side here you can see that the naming convention of the bones that have been assigned to this particular character is also the same naming convention that's used on all of the characters as part of the Mixamo package so I'm assuming that uh, Mixamo uh, uses the same standard setup for all of the characters be it uh, the ones that they are uh, supplying us all for free as a fun toy to play with uh, versus uh, the different uh, different uh, packages you can purchase from their site as well as the animations that they uh, supply you with will always maintain a consistency as far as uh, making everything work as a complete package so uh, the other observation here is as it happens the naming convention that you use is identical to the same naming convention that is used within uh, motion builder so what that means is everything becomes drag and drop oper operation as far as setting up character rigging and no need to make any kind of customized uh, retargeting solution in in motion builder as a template so um, get on with the show here uh, what we first want to do of course is extract the animation animation a given animation uh, out of this particular set doesn't really matter which one it is the idol is uh, a good uh, subject uh, I'm going to export that off screen because uh, there's some information here that I don't want to inadvertently show uh, would you uh, would you like to export this, this current scale to mesh with animations yes uh, this just makes it easier to see what's happening obviously what doesn't get exported, of course, is materials, uh, due to the fact that uh, uh, Unreal 4 manages its materials in a different manner than most applications do. But that gives us the necessary information that we need to have outputted. Now, I'll bring that over into Motion Builder, and as you can see, I already did some uh, pr preliminary tests. So we're not going to bring that in. What we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the old way of uh, doing a file import. So we don't save this, and we'll just bring it in uh, verbatim. So what you get is, of course, is the character with the animation set applied to it. Uh, not very useful. If we want to see the animation, we can do that in Unreal 4. So that's all we can really do with this as far as Motion Builder goes. However, um, the information as to its, its, its default posing uh, as to making sure that the animations line up uh, perfectly as a retarget is already in the file so if we turn off import uh, uh, the animation and we just do an open then we get the raw t-pose position in the, uh, facing in the z direction which is uh, a requirement as far as characterization goes so let's see if we can just quickly uh, rig up our character we'll go over to our uh, our template uh, folder and we're going to uh, go to characters and there's our characterize, characterizer, <laughs> is that actually a word? And we'll drag and drop that onto the hips, say we want that characterized, Every, no errors, it doesn't say well you don't have this, you don't have that. We'll make it a bipad of course, uh, and then we'll uh, select our character, uh, uh, this is your character selection, so you can have like a dozen different characters all individually different names, and still have access directly to that care through, through, a, through the root. We also have different ways of retargeting uh, based on uh, based on what we have in the scene. But in this case, we want to rig this up using an FKIK solution. So today, we are fully rigged as far as keyframe animation goes. So if we want to, we can create our own keyframes and um, and do uh, normal normal type of animations if we wish, uh, based on a full body uh, uh, HIK uh, 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 rigging solution. So that's nice. What makes life even nicer is. Uh, is uh, you can uh, convert uh, BBH uh, f files over to uh, motion builder compatible uh, FBX uh, files, uh, animation sets. So these can be uh, saved as individual takes to be able to apply to the character directly by either uh, loading it into the file here, load character animation, as well as we have the save function, which we'll be showing off in a minute. 
But uh, we're going to do some cheap animation. In this case, uh, we're just going to make the character dance. Now, the reason why you want to <laughs> make the character dance is because it's cheap animation. You always have some sort of dance clip that's available in any kind of given format. So we can just, in this case, we're going to use the story mode and we're going to make uh, Adam dance the Samba. And our take line here, or our, our story line here, is 716 uh, frames. So let's convert this over to 716 frames. And uh, we hit the play button, and Adam is, is dancing the samba. Now, as it happens, this is a cycle. It will just keep doing this over and over and over again with no pops or anything. It's just nice and clean. But uh, uh, using the story mode line, we can just obviously then um, uh, edit our animations like we would edit uh, a video. We can put in clips and uh, blend them, and make everything match up, retarget to whatever character that we want. It doesn't really matter. As long as we have the a an animation set that can be brought into Motion Builder, it can be retargeted to any character that you want. Okay, now we're done. Uh, we, wow, uh, we've spent days, hours, <laughs> weeks, minutes, seconds <laughs> with our animation. And uh, we want to uh, now bake this, plot this into our current scene, uh, per character selection. Uh, we have the option of all takes, of course, but we just want this one take. So we're going to plot that over to the control rig. Now with that done, we can take this. We don't need it anymore. We've accomplished a task, and uh, we'll go ahead and just delete that. And as you can see, indeed, the animation has been baked to our control rig. Now, the control rig is a standardized, uh, uh, like exoskeleton. Let's say that the uh, that the underlying skeleton is is uh, bound to, and then we can bake from our our character uh, rig here down to the uh, bones that have been uh, are part of the character. So how we do that is we simply just bake or plot to the skeleton. So with that plotted, it turns off the rig and we're, we have everything plotted to the uh, Mixamo uh, uh, rigging system that's in Unreal 4, which happens to be uh, motion building compatible, of course. So with that done, we can then go ahead and save the character. I'm going to do that off screen because once again, uh, I'm doing this on my work computer. Uh, file already exists. Yes, over right. Uh, export, we can turn that off. That off. Uh, takes is important. Um, with uh, Motion Builder, you can create multiple takes within the same same scene package and then uh, edit them globally. So if you need to reposition, like say for a player that's using a rifle and you want to use the same animation set for a sidearm, uh, you can retask globally across the entire set, then export by uh, uh, take name as individual files that you can import then into, uh, mo into Unreal 4. And life is easy as far as doing updates. But we're going to go ahead and export the single take here. So I'll save that out. And that puts us back over into Unreal 4, of course. So pop that up, see where we're at. Hoo -hoo. There you are. Okay, so we have Adam. We'll close that out, and uh, we're going to go to Adam's folder now. Uh, the char uh, each of the characters uh, obviously have their own skeleton, as far as the set goes. So each has to have its own animation applied to that set. But on the other so side of it, they, since all the rigs are the same, you could probably take a mesh and retarget it to a different skeleton. So you can take the entire set and uh, put them all onto one skeletal rig if you wish. Um, you do have some sizing differences, though, between some of the uh, objects here. For example, the vampire, if you apply uh, uh, a, um, let's say, a uh, absolute animation set to it, as in the case of what we're doing, then uh, <laughs> your vampire shrinks down to about half the size. So um, that's something else to deal with uh, for another uh, another on-the-fly kind of episode. Okay, so we want to bring Adam in as a dance. Okay, so we're going to bring him in, and we're going to tell him to use the Adam Skeleton Rig. Uh, where are you, Adam? Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Okay, there you are. Okay, we select Adam, and we say, okay, we want to bring the animation onto this character. We're going to do import. And then we kind of wait for it to import. Uh, I'm going to blow the 10-minute mark here, so <laughs> sorry. Uh, and we bring Adam in, and if we hit play, ta-da, he's dancing. So with that accomplished, uh, I think uh, more or less explains that kind of workflow. However, um, if we want, we can go to the Goblin, and just to kind of demonstrate that, we can bring the same animation set because it uses the same rig. And at this time, we are going to assign it to use the uh, Goblin Skeleton. So we can uh, make him uh, dance the uh, Gundam style if we want. So we bring him in. 
Uh, okay, wait. Do, 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 do. Okay, there we go. And, uh, ta-da. Different character dancing the, the samba. We go over to the animation set. Uh, we'll keep, uh, get, uh, Oops, stop. We'll bring Adam in, too, as well, so they can play together. Now, this uh, leads to some rather interesting possibilities as far as sync type of animation goes. So we can create two, two different characters performing two different actions, bring them in as a combination, and then uh, use a, a montage to kind of sync things up. And then we can have these, uh, you know, really accurate um, uh, melee type of animation sets, if we wish. So this kind of gives you at least a starting point to do some experimentation, <laughs> and uh, and it would be nice if we could shoot them. So um, uh, more or less, I think we covered our show and tell here. So uh, a little bit over to ten minutes, and uh, stop.